Stick with me as I discuss Library for Noobs. Hi, I'm Dr. Taren P. Lupo and welcome to Lupo TV. I'm going to take you through what a library is and why you should be interested in it. Now, first off, let me tell you a few things before we get going. I'm a complete noob at um, understanding internet technology. I'm not very good at it. Like, I can use it and I can put stuff up, you know, like on YouTube or I can social network. I don't really understand how it works. It might as well be, you know, some sort of magic. <laughs> I wouldn't know. So I wanted to make a video talking to people like myself that maybe aren't real tech heavy, but want to, or maybe are interested in using alternative platforms. And I'm going to explain what I think is one of the absolute coolest, but it's very different than what you're used to. So there's a few things I need to straighten out some basics so you understand what library is and it kind of takes the fear out of all this like how do you get started so this is library for noobs okay so first let me show you what library looks like this is kind of the front page of the app when you land there this is mainly people who are putting up videos right now and you can go through and get an idea of what these videos are now that might be something you are familiar with. If you go to YouTube, you'll see a list of videos and, you know, here are the creators and everything like that. So looking at it, okay, I get it. I kind of understand looking at it simple enough. But how it works is much, much different than most things out there. And it is really why I think it's going to be the future and why it's so cool. So let me explain the basics of how internet stuff sort of works and then you'll get a much better idea of how this thing works so first thing you need to know is whenever you go to the internet there are different protocols so what these protocols are are rules of how the internet runs so it's kind of like a um, a set of instructions that everybody has agreed to play by in order to use everything. So in other words, if I have a Google browser, a Chrome, or if I have Firefox, or if I have Internet Explorer, they can all kind of access the same Internet, although they can move pictures around and put in, you know, uh, apps that run on top of it and stuff like that, but they can access all the same information on the Internet. So all this information is all over the Internet and you can't see it until you use a browser so let's go back to this so this information is running all over the internet and it's um in different sources being hosted different places and what these browsers do is they let you look at that these are called uh they, they run by a set of rules called protocols and you're you've used it for years and probably didn't know what it was you remember in the address bar every time you type in a URL uh, these address bars it starts with an HTTP and sometimes it's HTTPS that's the standard internet protocol if I want browsers to find my website I have to um, work in that protocol and these browsers have to work in that protocol but if you're a noob and you really don't understand a lot of this there's a huge piece of the internet that is out there that doesn't run on this protocol so this is the most popular one and everybody's like okay http www blah 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 you know they type in what they know because this is the way most people interact with the internet but there's sections of the internet sometimes they refer to them as like the dark web or or just you know areas out there that the browsers um that don't follow this set of rules so they can't show up in your normal browsers Okay, so that's a protocol. Now, there's a lot of problems with the current protocols. And um, over the years, as things have developed, you know, you've got um, things like ICANN, where they can censor websites, they can take stuff down, 
Um, the websites are stored like, you know, kind of in central hubs. A lot of the information on the internet is in hubs, where um, if somebody wanted to erase the, uh, you know, if someone wanted to erase Facebook, they could just simply shut down that information where Facebook stores all of its information, and it would just disappear. Okay, so they're, they're hubs um, that are central points of data. Okay, so what happened is people were like, I'd really like to be able to send information and receive information without a middleman, without some corporation being in the middle of it, without um, someone censoring what I can see and what I can't. So people started developing other protocols outside the standard ones. So some, peop some people got together and decided the way we do stuff now is archaic and let's invent some new protocols. And the one I like is called Library. And Library is a really, really neat system because it, um, well, first of all, the idea of it is it eventually wants to be a gigantic library of digital content in the future. Um, uh, consider it a library of Alexandria, you know, this, this central hub where people can put stuff and it will last forever on that protocol without it being, you know, take it off. So it's, it's a direct peer-to-peer -peer sharing. And we're going to explain that in a little bit, but instead of the HTTP with library, um, you know, you're going to see LBRY when you load a library app. And maybe I can show you that. I'll go to like uh, one of mine, but you'll notice that, oh, let me take that down so you can see it better. You'll notice that it doesn't start with HTTP. It starts with LBRY. That means it's a library protocol. Okay, understand there are different protocols. We can un I can talk about why people are going this direction and starting to use this protocol. So, library wants to be a hub of information where people can uh, deposit, you know, things like uh, videos, things like music, things like programs, things like games. Just a giant repository. In order to access this information, you need something kind of like a browser. Remember how I was telling you that the other internet, you know, the internet you're familiar with runs on HTTP, right? Well, this will, um, this will be its own pro protocol that allows you to access the information that is being uploaded to the library protocol. Now, the way this works is, even though I'm saying library and I'm throwing it around, there's kind of different entities. There is this thing called the library app, which is what I'm showing you here. And this is an app that I load that allows me to find information in this protocol. This app um, is basically what is being developed by the team at library. So there, there's all this information that's in place using the library protocol and this app sets on top of it and helps you steer around in it and upload and download files and interact with that information. Because this is open source, the library protocol is open source, other companies can make their own apps and it's all, it's not controlled by one gigantic company. So let me explain this a little better in something you already know. If I go into my Gmail account, there is a protocol for that, uh, STMP, I think it's called. STMP, which means that my email runs on this, uh, this platform um, that other email platforms also run on. So like if I want to send an email from Gmail to Yahoo, Yahoo can read my email because they all share the same protocol and they can use this information and send it back. So you get that idea that, you know, from AOL, Yahoo, whatever, these emails can communicate back and forth because they've all agreed to use this protocol. 
Now compare that to something like Facebook. If I have Facebook Messenger, I can't really email Facebook messages out directly. Like uh, Facebook has a lockdown on their messaging service. So this kind of stinks because if you build a bunch of friends and family on Facebook and you get tired of Facebook and want to leave, you can't really take their emails with you. Uh, you can't take the contact list with you. But like Gmail that has this open protocol, you can take that information and say you want to go over to Hotmail. You could download your contacts over there. You could bring the information with you because they're all sharing this protocol. Something like Facebook locks it all in place so your information's trapped with Facebook. And the problem is if you get sick of Facebook or Facebook changes or whatever, you can't take that information with you. This is the idea that a lot of places have a lockdown on their own information and their own emails and their own protocols. The idea of library is to make an open system that's not controlled by anyone. That the community kind of polices itself or talks to itself and decides which way the community wants to go and how to use library. So instead of a bunch of corporate fat cats getting rich on Facebook, this is an open community that, that is open source. Everybody can see what every, you know, um, everybody knows the rules and they can make their own apps if they don't like the way things are being made. It, it allows true freedom and free speech across a platform. So it's really that simple is, do you want all your information tied up with a corporate top-down thing or do you want it open source where it's free to the public um, and you can nobody's controlling what you post and nobody's censoring and there's none of that stuff okay that being said let me show you a little more so you understand because the library is still very beta so if you guys are watching this and you're like oh man that place sounds awesome I'm gonna come over there right now and set up accounts Understand this, they are still in the beginning phases in trying to make peer-to-peer -peer, um, sharing like this over the library protocol seamless. And that takes a while to make it run well. It is a lot of testing where, um, you know, the, there'll be glitches and glitches. And, and if you're going over there and expecting it to be a social network like it is with... Uh, you know, YouTube or, or uh, Steam it or Facebook or whatever, if you're expecting that social experience, it's not there yet because they're building the guts and bones of this thing so it runs good before they go add all the social elements. Um, this is very exclusive right now. So if you want to go over there and help out, it's also a really good time. Because right now, they're giving out cryptocurrency to people as rewards for them to help beta test. So that means if this protocol takes off in the future and you're kind of helping them right now when it's easy to get make money in here, they, they have their own currency called library coins. Um, just it's, If you've ever heard of like Bitcoin, it's kind of like that. That right now... In order for you to put up with the greenness of this place, they're rewarding you with coins. So understand that. If you're going over there thinking, oh man, I'm going to publish my stuff and build a big audience and all that, that's probably not going to happen at this moment. This is more like a beta testing ground. Or if you're going over there expecting things to just work perfect and you can just put stuff up and you know, you're going to be able to socialize with everyone, that's not there yet. This is... This is mainly just putting up file sharing. Like I, I put out, I host something on my computer and other people that decide they want to watch what I put up can download that. And we, we pass these files around and, and if a bunch of people, eventually there'll be thousands and thousands of people, each have a little piece of these files or, or have the entire file, um, we can share it all over this network. And, and maybe you guys remember how... Um, Music sharing used to kind of work in the 90s, like uh, Kazaa or LimeWire, you know, peer-to-peer -peer sharing. That's that's how these protocols run that um, that uh, use file sharing these days. So that's the concept, is instead of all of our information being held at one giant central computer, everybody who's using the network holds a little piece of it. 
and it's duplicated all over the place. So whoever has their computer on at that time, that information is, that's where you get it from. Now, there have been lots of stuff that have tried file sharing or tried what they're, what this is deemed uh, decentralization, but none of them, I don't think, have the same protocol as library because library has learned. Sometimes it's not the best to be the first in because you kind of watch all the problems these other protocols set up. Um, libraries coming at the right time where they've learned and watched what these other people made as mistakes and how they built their networks that are eventually might even collapse under their own weight. You know, um, things like uh, Bitcoin or Steemit or, uh, you know, the way their currency works is there's a lot of concerns about it. So they've learned how to do this. Now, who this is good for right now is people who like to beta test, people that want to come in and like cryptocurrency, and um, content creators that kind of want to support the platform and start playing with this. Now, you can make money in here and you can pick up an audience. You can. It's just more work um, than, you're, than normal for you. You know, you, you've got to go in and interact with people. Um, and you know, they're right now, I have the ability, if you're a content creator, you have the ability to put content up and then charge for cryptocurrency for people to watch it. Um, I put up all my stuff for free, and what happens is people actually will tip me sometimes. So, let me see if I can show. I put up um, some stuff recently, and you know, three different people tipped me a dollar, and another person really liked this thing I did about how to how to run a grateful life, and they tipped me five bucks. So it, you know, you can make money right now in this beta form, and also. Um, you know, you can also buy coins relatively cheap right now if you want to get them why before, you know, it's growing and growing. If you want to be more the first in on stuff, this is the time to come in. So I want you to, to understand exactly what library is and what it isn't. Right now, the library app runs on the library protocol, and that app is being developed and... Um, you can talk to the developers. There is community, like we have a uh, uh, what's called a Discord chat. I'll show you what that looks like. So there's another app you can run that's namely for like groups that want to talk to each other, and it's called Discord. And Library has its own right here. This little green thing. Library has its own Discord chat where you can go in here and actually have a social element and talk to people and talk to the developers. And they're very nice. They will help you. Uh, they've been super nice to me, and uh, they are very responsive. If I go to them with a problem, within like two days, it's it's solved. And they usually give me a little money to help beta test. I'll find something wrong, and they'll be like, "Hey, thanks for pointing that out. Here's ten bucks," you know, and they'll drop you a little tip. So it's a win-win. I get to help them with this protocol I believe in, and uh, make a little money on the side. Now. I imagine when it's said and done, it's going to look very different than it looks today. Uh, and it is cool to be able to be part of that process as it develops and give them feedback and be like, hey, as a video content creator, these are the things I'd love to see in there. Um, because a lot of these guys are programmers. They don't make content, so they don't look at it the way I look at it. They're watching you know, the protocol and how keeping it a free speech platform and making sure you know the currencies work right, the stuff that I don't know jack about, but I know what content creators need, and so I, I throw my two cents in over there. If you feel the same way and you'd like to get involved, now is the time. I uh, will put a link, and what you'll have to do is you'll start by downloading the library app and then basically setting yourself up a channel. and. I'm going to make a whole separate video showing you how to upload and how to uh, actually use the app when it's up and going. But the important part of this video is I wanted you to understand as a noob how, why this is important, how it's different than everything else out there really, and that it could be absolutely gigantic in the future. This could be 
you know, imagine uh, Amazon and Netflix dropped in the, you know, and as one gigantic repository of information because what this actually allows is it cuts out a lot of middlemen that creators can easily sell their information um, to people that want to buy it and the creator gets 100% of it. It's, it, they, you know, nothing shaved off. So as a creator, that's very exciting. And for people that support my channel that are like, hey, I would really like that creator to get all my money. I don't feel like giving, you know, um, Google, like when I get tipped on uh, YouTube, I'll be in there and someone will hit me with a super chat. So say you give me $10 on YouTube and a super chat, I think, um, I think YouTube takes about four bucks of that. So, you know, I'm only getting six bucks and I'm sure that the uh, person donating would rather see me get all 10 and I would like to get all 10. <laughs> so, so this is coming and it's, I, I think a very, very exciting thing for video creators. And if you're willing to help beta test this and put up with the nuances of doing this, um, I think the reward could be huge right now. Because right now you can get cryptocurrency relatively easy. They just give it to you for free for using it right now. And um, and in time, I think that's going to be worth a lot of ma money. I mean, imagine being able to get go back, you know, seven, eight years and getting Bitcoin when it started. We're going to be able to get library as it's starting right now and have some influence on how it develops. So I think if you are a video creator or a content or music creator or an artist or whatever your your thing is, um, and you'd like to get involved in something exciting, you need to check out library and download that. So that's all I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm going to continue to do tutorial videos uh, for library uh, and I will share what I know and what I figure out through the time I'm using it. And I hope you're as excited about it as I am, because I'm really excited if you understand what this means, that there, you know, if you really get the idea, there's there's nothing as powerful as this place, I think, in the future. It's going to be amazing. One last thing I forgot to mention is if you found this video helpful and you're on library, I appreciate a tip. That way I can keep making videos like this and help all the people that are noobs like myself coming in. Thank you so much. Remember, love each other, support each other. Be nice to your cat. I'll see you in the next video.